Well, that's the thing. The, the, they do something weird to the hydro. I'm, I'm taping already. <laughs> I've been taping. Friday always tapes. Friday I've been pressed record. We're 45 seconds in. Friday always does that. He just tapes me talking shit. You know what I'm saying? But, um, Trying to get gold, Jerry. Get gold, gold, Jerry. Jerry. Gold. Is gold, Jerry. <laughs> Yeah. But, but yeah, no, so yeah. Cool. But let's get to our interview of the evening right here. And it's 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 I'm I'm not even gonna lie to you. I'm kinda geeked right now, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, yo you do remember I think it was about two years ago, we we're at the C B C building. Yes. And I saw you and I was like, Oh my god, oh my god. I remember. I was I was fanboying out fanboying out a little bit, you know what I'm saying? I ain't gonna lie to you. But the reasons, you know, multiple accolades, you know what I'm saying, awards, five time uh, Juno nominated? Three. Three times? Mm-hmm. You sure we're not going four or four? Yeah, three times Juno nominated. I, I, I think mm-hmm. she would know better than you, <laughs> True, true, true. But for the people who are in the listening audience who are hearing this voice, and for the people who are watching on YouTube, we are very, very honored to have in the building over here at the Toronto Collective, Melanie Durant in the motherfucking building. Hell yeah. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't cry for you. I won't, I won't, I won't, I won't. Yeah. Let me throw Round some of sound effects Round in of there. Round of there. Come on. <laughs> Thank you. Let's get right to it. You've been going through this whole pandemic, year and change. How has your mental state been through this whole time? It's a mess. It's mush up, man. Like, you can't do this to everybody and, and act them, expect them to act normal. These are war tactics they're using on us if you really mm. want the truth. Divide and conquer and the manipulation stuff. And, you know, if people would just work together, they couldn't do this. Say it's that. It's like they turn the, turn the black people on the white people, the white people on the black people, and then suddenly the Asians <coughs> got in there. They hate us too. It's like, oh my goodness. You know, it's like. That one hurt me. It's, it's yeah. awful. Yeah. Yeah, that one yeah. hurt me when the Asian people say, yo, we hate them, bro. Come on. But whatever. Yeah. It's beautiful. It's, yeah, it's a good thing. It's nice to have you here. Thank um, you. Yeah. So you've been making some music during that time. Oh, yeah. Because you know what? Music heals. Music feels good. You know, one of the first things these jerks said is no singing. I was like, really? I felt targeted. I really felt hard. No singing. We're yes. just talking about because of the spit. One of the yeah, the, the speaking moistly. Mm. You know, <laughs> like, I wasn't talking that? moistly like Justin Trudeau. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, no singing, and I guess because yeah, the audience and whatever, and then mm. you sing to them and spittle on them. But it's like you know what? Honestly, I've never spittled on anybody in a show. You know, <laughs> that ain't part of my show. So, yeah, so. You're, you're not a uh, what is it? Trey songs. Holding the girl down and spitting in her mouth, like not oh holding her God. down, but like he's got her like in like a headlock or whatever. Oh. He's about to drop like no, that's that thing. Yeah, that's yeah a and thing? it was during COVID too. Oh my that's God, true. it was it during was COVID. COVID. The man was like, "Yo, no fucks given." But so, yeah, so like you were doing shows pre-COVID, obviously. Yes. What was the last show you were doing before it, 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 it hit? <laughs> the very last show was. Uh, Jeez, the name of the place escaped me. But it was a show we did with my mom, like my mom's show. Mm -hmm. And uh, the funny thing is we knew something was coming. And, you know, they said social distance. And after the show was done, the whole audience lined up and hugged us. So, (laughs) (laughs) oh, my God. But we didn't know that was going to be the last show. Mm -hmm. But thinking back, that's what happened. Because I went home like, oh, my goodness. And you don't want to be rude to people like, yo, get away from me. Don't you know? You know what I mean? But and we didn't know it was going to grow into what it is now. So what date was that? Oh wow! Don't ask me that. I don't even know what the date is today. Uh, <laughs> okay, so okay, let me let me see if we, I could refresh your memory a bit because when did it hit? April? When they were like March? When, it was March when they were like, "There's a fucking problem." Okay, everybody has to stay home. So you want me right? to? I can tell you the exact day the world changed forever. Mm. It was March 11th. March 11th. Yeah, because one. It's my homeboy who passed away. It was his birthday, and we were mm. celebrating his. We were actually partying. And then we were potting. The Raptors were playing Indiana Pacers. Mm-hmm. And, or was it Pacers or whatever? He yeah, was the Pacers. What's known? The Rudy Gobert guy, whatever. The tall guy. Yeah. Who got fucking, he was touching everything. And he ended up shutting down the NBA. 
But yeah, it was like the March 11th. We were there at William Landings. We were partying, having a good old time. We're like, yeah, the Raptors extended championship. You know what I'm saying? Boom, boom, boom. You know, they went, they're, they're like, oh, we're pausing the NBA, blah, blah, blah. And then so we are where we are now. March, if it's March 11th, March February. 12th. No, March 12th is like okay, so shut down. Beginning of March. Yeah. February, January. What type of shows were you like? Because you, you toured with your mom. I've seen you mention it a few times in interviews, right? Mm-hmm. So like around where were you right before that hit? Oh, I remember the last gig was at Old Mill. See? Refreshing the memory. Of yes. And it was probably about a week before the big shutdown. Mm. Because I remember my mom saying, hey, imagine we didn't know that was going to happen. That was our last show. Yeah. Remember the audience hugging us? That's crazy. People still being able to hug like that and everything. Wow. Yep. Wow. Yep. Wow. 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 <coughs> so you got your new single out right now. Yes. Right? Mm-hmm. I've seen you on CTV, a whole bunch of different shows. You know what I'm saying? What's that like doing the promo like now for stuff in comparison to back in the days? Wow, well, I'm sitting in my room in, in my closet, actually. <laughs> I'm in the wow. closet, you know, doing, trying to, you know, just act like everything's fine. Mm-hmm. It's it's strange. It's it's strange, but I'm getting used to it. I mean, change is change, right? But yeah. I, I don't want this for a change. I don't want this to be the new normal. You yeah. know, I feel like we've been, we're being conditioned and groomed, and it's like, it's not up to them to take our lives. Our lives belong to us. Let's talk to them. Mm-hmm. And that's the thing. Did you hear four pilots died? Four pilots died from taking this because they got blood clots when they went up in the sky. Mm. Yeah, it's a sticky topic around here, especially on set. But it's. Oh, well, sorry. I no, bet. no. Hey, hey, talk that shit. You understand what I'm saying? But yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. the new thing today is that uh, the little tiny veins under your skin, people's veins are exploding. That's the new thing I heard today. I was like, really? Oh. So I don't know if it's going to turn into Walking Dead, but what I do know is I know how to deal with the Walking Dead. Yeah, you see, you've been watching the show, eh? <laughs> So let me, let me redirect uh, you back to this. <laughs> <laughs> what is the, this time in lockdown? Is, like, what has it done for your writing? Like, what are you expressing differently than like, what you were expressing before? You know what? I just I've had more time on my hands, and I'm I'm not overthinking. I'm just doing it, and then there's no like real. You can't hire a makeup artist and hairdresser and all this stuff. So I'm like, yo, I'll do it myself. Whatever, mm-hmm. you know. I get just hands on and um, do it yourself. It's like I'm coloring this big ass poster. I've been coloring for two weeks mm-hmm. to try to make myself a backdrop for my new music video. Yeah. I haven't oh, shot it wow. yet because I'm not done the set. Yeah. And I've got so much props that I've ordered in advance. And actually, my last video, I was I started crying because I ordered months in advance mm-hmm. and my clothes were too big. I lost wow. too much weight and I started crying only because I thought I was so prepared. I was so prepared. I'm ready. I got this. Yeah. I got that. I got the change. I know what's going on. I wrote the treatment. Everything, you know? Yeah. And I'm there, and then the clothes is too big. I was like, So how did that really affect the shoot? Mm, I just pinned it a little bit, and my mom told me, just, just cool. She goes, I wish I had that problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good problem to have, right? Yeah. Right? Yeah. But my face, my mood, everything kind of just dropped because I felt sad. I felt like... It didn't work out the way I or it wasn't gonna. I wasn't gonna get the product that I was looking for. Mm. This is for the listen video. No, this is the next one. It hasn't come out yet. It's still in editing. Uh, and then the one I'm coloring, that's for the next one. So, okay. are you directing these videos also? Yes, sir, Bob. Yeah, cause I've seen that. That you know, <laughs> I've seen you directing on the listen video. Well, you know, when we can't have nobody around, you just got to take on all these jobs. You got to do whatever you could do. And Rock the thing is, too, shit. sitting at home bored. It's like, how long are you going to sit home bored? It's like, just take some pictures, write some mm-hmm. stuff, make your list, get prepared, so you, and get you, out there and start smashing stuff in the face, so you know? So she's pulling the RZA. Mm. She's pulling the RZA move. I'm controlling everything. I wrote the movie. I wrote the soundtrack. <laughs> I filmed all the parts. I got six films. Yeah, that's right. No, you that's might dope. as well. That's dope. It's a new, it's a new avenue, yeah. right? Because next thing you know, someone looks at you and says, oh, yeah, you, you, you direct videos? Can you do my video? Yeah. Right. So like back in the days where you're directing videos or helping with the directing or is this a new thing? 
Um, I always kind of had a hit. I always kind of had an opinion, mm. but as for like, I had written a treatment for uh, which was it? Let me. Mm-hmm. And uh, yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. and actually, because it had like a little Indian feel to mm-hmm. the, the original, right? So I had us all in like Bollywood mm-hmm. and Cardinal's dressed in Bollywood. And then when I got to explain into X about the crane shot, he goes, Who do you think you are, Michael Jackson? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, Okay. But I drawn the treatment and whatever, and I drew everybody's hands off the board because I can't draw hands. Yeah. So then X started trying to teach me how to draw hands. Still can't draw hands. But yeah. So yeah. <laughs> hands are hard to draw. Yeah. <laughs> hands are very hard to draw. Yes, I know. But um, yeah, like I tried, but I wasn't successful at it. Mm. Right? Until now. You mentioned somebody, Director X. Mm-hmm. Okay? Little X at the time. Mm-hmm. Right? Can you give us a little X story or a director X story from any time that you know from doing work with him? Or even just very- meeting him around? Like, because you guys, you're doing red carpets in them times. You're all over the oh, place. Oh, yeah, that's right. Much music. Uh, hmm. I don't, I don't, I don't really, I can't think of anything offhand. Uh, maybe something on the set. You know what I'm saying? Get I just know he's very <laughs> he's very observant I'll tell you that he's very observant I believe they were shooting the Glenn Lewis video at the time mm, at the no city one. city hall okay back in the day I think it was don't you forget it wow don't you forget it yes mm. and I came walking in from somewhere and X looked at me and he said what's with your pants and I was like what's with my pants it was like one was in the shoe and one was outside the shoe he was just telling me like you're not together you know so that's when I realized this guy's really observant mm. look at my shoes and how did y'all start to get to work together actually I had it was back in the day so I was going to I was going out with my girlfriends and at the time I guess um, there was a party and it was basketball players or something there and I'm not single so I'm sitting there on the couch and my girlfriends are gone to meet guys, right? Mm. And it turns out I was sitting right next to Ramel. I didn't know him, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. but we got to talking. And he's like, so what do you do? And I was like, oh, I'm a singer. And he's like, oh yeah? He goes, I'm a producer. And I was uh, like, oh yeah, so let's, you know, send, send me, give me your info and whatever and let's work. So we got to working and uh, first song I wrote was Housework, because I clean my house and write. Mm. I like to distract my brain. I find like when I distract my brain, it just does something else. I like to be doing two, three other things. Yeah. And then, I don't know, it just focuses by itself. <laughs> and then it starts writing, which is weird. Yeah. So I basically just started writing about what I was doing. And then he said, did you just write a song about cleaning up? I said, yeah. <laughs> and he goes, I like it. And he yeah. goes, I want to play it for my friends. And it turned mm. out his friend was X. Yeah. There you go, Friday. There's your X story. <laughs> yeah, that's 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 very interesting. Yeah, yeah. Salute to director X. Yo. Yeah. Did you ever get the socks collabo that you wanted? Oh no. <laughs> <laughs> Salute to big no. Socrates, yo. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We gotta make that happen, socks. We need. We love hip hop interview. That's the that's that's me right over there, Gooch. We love hip hop interview. Melanie Durant collabo, okay? No particular order. <laughs> oh no, you can you can get your, your collabo. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Wonderful. Is, is there any female MCs in the city or artists in the city that you want to work with mm-hmm. or you're rocking with? Oh, uh, MCs as in rappers. Artists, artists in general, not to be yeah. MCs. This fe- artist, any artist, female. Uh, Tay Durant. Tay Durant. Tay Durant. Do you know Tay Durant? Family. That's my daughter. That's what I thought. I, I, didn't want, I didn't want to get too mixy and be, you know, but when I heard the rant, I was like, oh, okay, okay, yeah. all right. So and, you uh, she, you, your daughter got bars. Yeah, she do. Okay. Yeah, she do. And then there's Duchess, and then there's Amoy, okay. and then there's Divine, and then there's Mishy, and then there's, uh, like, I love all my Canadian girl artists. I'm going to look, look her up right but now. any Taylor. new, like, I'm talking, like, new female artists, the younger generation. Uh, Sam, Century Sam. Mm-hmm. I love Century her. Sam. And, um, who else? We're just talking Canadian artists. Well, no. Whatever. You can go in the you go wherever you wherever you feel. Her, she's amazing. Mm. I like her vibe. I like when the music really just speaks to you and you feel like you're part of it. You know, yeah, 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 or you, yeah, you yeah, just yeah. can relate to it so nice. You know, yeah. I like that. 
And she got a mystique about her. Right. Her. 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 Right. <laughs> you know what I'm yes. Who else? Who else you got in there? Um. What are you listening to? What's your first go-to yeah. when you? What's what Melanie Durant on, in in her earpods? Honestly, I'm listening to my own music, my own album right now, and okay. I, that sounds crazy, but I'm still enjoying it. And then I'm creating visuals for it, so I want to be in it and and look at it from a different angle each time. Mm -hmm. And I want to revisit the lyrics, not to change them because it's mixed, mastered. It's already an album, right? Mm -hmm. So there's no going back now. No, nope. but. Um, to create the visuals and and just just see what kind of imagery comes at me yeah. and try to document that and bring the story to life because there's nothing like to me personally there's nothing like having an idea in your head and then being able to present it to somebody mm -hmm. else because mm -hmm. when it's in your head it's like you're not hey did you see that because then they, then you look crazy right yeah, yeah, yeah. No, for sure, for <laughs> but to sure. actually create something and bring it to life so that you can yeah, share it, it there's no better feeling than that yeah 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 and you've always been around music your whole life because your mom she's been doing music she's been touring can you like give the audience a little give an explanation of like what your mom was doing even before you got into music my mom's always done music and only music mm -hmm. so that's not like i don't know uh she was doing i guess did you say before i got into music before you even got into music like while you're watching her like you know what i think i want to do this this is cool okay well uh, let's go back to when i was five hmm. and uh she was singing at a dinner club and that's the only reason i was allowed in is because it wasn't a bar okay so then i was i was allowed to well she asked me if i wanted to come up on stage and introduce her and i was so excited so yeah, I totally did that, and I introduced her like I was on the Muppet Show. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, let's <laughs> yeah. get it, And I was yeah. so happy, mm, and it was so much fun, right? But I've always looked up to my mom. She's an amazing performer, amazing. I always make jokes and say that she turns the audience into like the thriller zombies because mm. they do whatever she says, whatever. Mm. I've never seen that before in my life, and it's like she has control over wow. the crowd. Wow, yeah. Like we were at a, um, we did an outside show at, uh, in Vaughn Mills mm -hmm. and it started to rain and some of the audience were on these metal bleachers and uh, the police told them to get down and they wouldn't, mm -hmm. right? Because it started to uh, lightning oh, and yeah, yeah lightning, it's, thunder, it's, rain. Uh, target. Yeah. yeah. So they, they came over to us and said, can you announce for them to get off the bleachers, right? Yeah. During the show. So we, my mom announced, you need to get off the bleachers, right? So they get off the bleachers and come to the front where everybody else is. And uh, lightning happened. And the thunder, the big noise. Oh, and the whole audience did this. Oh, but they didn't leave. Yeah. They just leaned away <laughs> and still stood there. And it's like, these guys, they never leave it. So we were like, we did one more song and said, that's it. End of the show, you got to go home. That's crazy. We have to unplug. They were not leaving. Yeah. That's to give you an example of how people enjoy the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we love the show. So, I mean, it's. The show's over. You got to leave. But you, yeah. You, know, you got to go home, but you got to get out of here. Exactly. Exactly. Especially when the police are saying, yo, you got to go. And there was an uh, ambulance, too. And fucking lightning. Yeah. yeah. Thunder and lightning. Like, come on. Why are you staying <laughs> on the middle bleachers? Like, come on, people. Right. Really? Yeah. And there was another show we did when we were in. Um, Detroit, we do a lot of shows out in Detroit. Mm -hmm. And we did a, a doll party. So it's all these ladies who collect dolls. Oh, wow. That must have been freaky. It was kind of freaky. That and the thing is, off. before the show, before the show, um, <laughs> we said, we're going to kill them. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And after that, we said, we can't say that ever again. There was a lady, the ambulance came for her <laughs> and she was on the stretcher. They oh, put her wow. in there Holy and she had her shit. doll in her hand like this. Waving it at us, rock and roll. <laughs> I was like, oh my god! Oh, it's like, don't say that ever again. It's like, you know, that's not what we meant. But yeah, they took her away. That's crazy. That's I know. So, tell me about the first step, or tell us about the first step when you said, you know what, I want to do what my mom is doing. That was in kindergarten. Wow! I moved in kindergarten. The Did teacher you... used to get me to sing for show and tell. Holy shit! So way <laughs> back then you were singing. Yes. That's so okay. Crazy. So, do you say you, you influence your daughter to sing, or is it your mother that influenced your daughter to sing? 
Um, or is it a combination of both? It's probably a combination. I would say I probably would think I would think it's a combination of both. But did she come to you like I want to do what you're doing and what Grandma's doing? Like mm. no, no, she just started. Uh, I showed her how I do uh, my stuff on uh, Garage Band. Ah, uh, you gave her the blueprint. Yeah, I just showed her when she's like, "Thanks, mom." Ah, Off she went. Sick. <laughs> <laughs> but the thing is, I've been singing to her since she was born. And then for fun, we, we sing around the house and we freestyle. Mm. Like I make up stuff and little like rhymes and stuff and sing to her. And then she's got to sing something back to me. And she loves it. You see her eyes light up and she comes up with these cute little lines. Like I'm talking about when she was still in kindergarten or grade yeah. one and stuff like that. You know what I mean? Well, how old is she now? Oh, enough never tell ever, ever again. Well, <laughs> no, no. I that's the one, that's yeah. the one question that you don't ask. I'm not asking age. your age. Oh, I know. Oh, okay. All right. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, okay. Okay. <laughs> Let me let me see how I can let me if I can skate around this. Can she buy alcohol? Mm-hmm. All right, then that's enough said. Okay. That's all I need to know. That's, <laughs> that's, 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 all, that's all. That's all. I, I, I wasn't looking for a direct spot, like you know. Oh, she's twenty eight, or no, you know. Just, she can buy alcohol. All right, cool. That I, that's enough information for me. Mm. You know so what I mean? When we check but, out the music, we won't be like, "Whoa, you said what?" <laughs> right? Like, you know what to expect. Like, you know what I mean? Like, you know how to look at, like, listen with the ear. You know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. But also, I noticed in the listen video at mm-hmm. the end, there's a trunk, and someone is looking through the lock. What is what? What is that about? Like, <laughs> you're the first person to mention that. I uh, I've been waiting for a while for somebody to notice that. Mm. Well, the song itself is about the end of an emotional, emotionally abusive relationship, right? And I'm trying to shed light on people being spoken to a certain way and being treated a certain way uh-huh. and shutting that down okay. and, and letting them know, like empowering them with the knowledge that you don't got to put up with that. Uh. And the thing is, if you listen to the story and how it goes, um, it's about a selfish entitled person. Do you know what mm. I mean? Just, just speaking poorly to me right so what you saw at the end was me saying you cannot victimize everybody there's consequences to action mm. oh interesting all right little jewel right there yeah because I, I was watching it and i just caught it it's like it was the it was actually the bat of the eye that caught my attention because i was just watching i'm like oh that chest and then i see it and they're like Hold on. Oh, I did see what I thought I saw. I like okay. that you went back for that. I love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's let's go back a little bit to the, one of your first videos, the Let Me video. Mm-hmm. What was your mind state back in them times? Um. Hmm. I was really trying to do a good job. I mean, I'm still in that frame of I want to do a good job, you know, mm. but I wanted to come across as a professional, Yeah. you know, I mean, we all watched music videos back in the day and thought, oh, I want to do something like that. Or how do I, you know, be part of something like that? And, mm. you know, as an entertainer and a writer myself, I had to figure out how to write the song in the first place. Like, I've always been a singer, like I've been saying, yeah. because I've always sang, but as for how to write a song and make it good, you know, it's like, oh my goodness, okay, well, just start singing. Singing and rhyming, you know? Mm-hmm. And now we've brought into a choreographer, it's like, singing, rhyming, and, and dancing, dancing. Oh, <laughs> it's like, oh my God. That's so weird. I just really wanted to do a good job. I wanted to look comfortable. I wanted mm-hmm. to look professional. And that was my goal. Yeah. It was like, your style was like, an, a, how could I describe it? a little because it wasn't a big eclectic style it wasn't like oh you're so crazy different but it was different than the status quo you know <laughs> like Deborah Cox was around like um, Tamia all of them right mm-hmm. and they were like a very like straight style of R&B you know what I'm saying like traditional R&B style but you had like a a fusion going on was that like intentional? no not necessarily I mean because of uh, growing up with my mom mm. and listening to different types of music, it just kind of latched on to me different styles. And I've always said that uh, good music doesn't need a genre. It's just good music. It yeah. doesn't matter if it's country, rock, soul, 
hip hop. It doesn't matter. It just has to be good. Yeah. So because I know so many different music styles and stuff, it just creeps in there on me. It's not an intentional thing. Yeah. I actually noticed a couple things on the new album where I'm like, that sounds like I'm country. <laughs> like, okay, well, whatever. <laughs> it's um, all good. Is your do, uh, is your father musical? Like, is no. he an artist? No. Not no, not at all. No. So it all comes from your mom. Yes. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Maximus. You Maximus Records. Those J Diggs. Hope there was a bunch of people on that label. Take us back to the Maximus Records times. What about it? <laughs> but I just don't know what you mean. He wants to know your. He wants to know this. The, the mix like what was the what was the on. what was the vibe like when you guys were doing? Because it, it was like essentially like an independent label, no? Uh, no. It was management. It was management. Yeah, it was management. I was signed I to first Motown label. and then to Koch. Okay. Okay. So then during those times, they got you to deals with those people or was it like just like... Yeah, how I got my first deal was... Um, um, let me see. X used Where I'm Going for a commercial he was shooting. In LA. Mm -hmm. So they flew me out to LA and I'd never been to LA before. Yeah. And I was sitting in this car, the PT Cruiser, and uh, they're like, okay, sing your song. And I'm in this car and they're in another car. I think they're towing me or something. And um, I'm looking around because I'm like, geez, it's LA. And they had left a walkie talkie in the car with me. And I hear X go, look at the camera. <laughs> Stop looking out the window. Look at the camera. I was like, oh my goodness, okay. Keep singing. Mm. But it's exciting. I'm in LA, right? Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's what happened there. And um, hold, on, hold on, hold on. This is to get like a, the demo version of like getting a record deal. This is like how do you introduce yourself to the record label type of thing? Yeah. So that commercial played during the Super Bowl. Oh wow! And that's then crazy. the president of Motown saw that and realized he had the record on his desk already. So oh. that was when nine eleven happened because he had sent me a ticket to fly to New York to come in to meet with them mm -hmm. and 9-11 uh, had happened and I had brought my guitar and the airline said that I couldn't bring my guitar it had to go under the plane and I only had a soft case and because I travel all the time I've seen the luggage people drop kicking baggage I knew it was not gonna be a guitar any yeah, longer when I got to the other side so I said I can't yeah I was yeah. actually crying and I'm like I can't do this and I had a girlfriend come pick up the guitar and I left the guitar and just went wow yeah that's crazy well, it's you, weird you, right you didn't say you love your instrument it's like a child right yeah I guess yeah yeah, yeah. right especially if you, you know like you said you've seen with your own eyes the treatment that the, they're giving instruments and other baggage and luggage, yeah so yeah the chances are of you getting through scot-free and having your guitar the way you want it is yeah, it's a 50-50, and you're not willing to take that 50-50. I don't blame you. Yeah. I would have did the same thing. Yeah, I would have been heartbroken, too. Yeah. But then I would have told them, now, you know, you guys can get me a guitar, guitar when I land. But probably they had one for you. They did, yeah. Yeah, so. And that's like going out to get the deal with Motown, right? Mm-hmm. So between Motown and then you were signed to Koch after. Mm-hmm. Right? Do you prefer the major or do you for, prefer the independent route? Like, like now after, like having the deals and stuff. I like being in control. I like doing what I would like to do. Mm. See, when you have the big machine, it's great because they're gonna, if their plan is to put you out, right? Mm. They're gonna make sure you get heard and you know what I mean? Mm. Do all their machine magic. But I've never had so much control over what I've wanted to do yeah. ever, ever. But from the experience of the record deal in the first place, I didn't know what I wanted to do exactly, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? I didn't even realize the moment where they had agreed they were gonna sign me. I was in the office, the guy had said, who's there stealing my song or stealing my sound? And I, right away I was offended. Cause I'm like, who's this guy? He wasn't here when I was writing my song. And, yeah. <laughs> and Taj was like, no, oh, cool out, cool out, cool out. But cause it's the big president mm -hmm. of Motown, but it's like, 
you're not gonna disrespect me. I don't care what you have. You weren't there, yeah. you know. You weren't in the Talk gym to me, me anyway. I don't business who you think you are. Yeah. But anyway, <laughs> back yeah, to reality. Talk. Yeah, no, it's true though. But people will people will test you with this shit. That's what listen is about. Mm. If I had said, "Oh, I'm so sorry, I so stole your sound," get out of here, man. Wow. But um, <laughs> you know, because they say the music industry, like everybody gets fucked when they go in the music industry, figuratively. Right? Did was there any examples of that? Like, did you get any bunky contracts or anything like that when you were going through this? When you were trying to navigate through the industry? No, not that I can recall. But at the same time, I've always had a manager. Well, mm. through this kind of stuff, so the manager handles that. Like, yeah, there's certain yeah. things my manager won't tell me because it's like, why don't you have your feelings hurt? You know, they didn't yeah. like this or they didn't like that. It's like, well, you got to tell me so I know what the hell's going on. Yeah. I remember being on tour with 50 and uh, and Cardinal and the, the dancers, everybody. And um, I had actually lost my voice. My voice is my power. Mm-hmm. How am I going to do this job without my voice? So yeah. then I was told to lip sync. And I'm like, Oh. Yeah, and I'm terrible at lip, lip syncing. I was singing along, but I had lost my voice, so I was like, uh. <laughs> it was terrible. Oh, and so man. I got bad reviews, and I didn't know that I had a bad review. Mm-hmm. And guess what? They hid it from me on the bus because I, I came, I found it. And I was like, what is this? Why is it hiding? <laughs> it's like, um, you maybe want to sit down for this. You know, so yeah, Ooh. management protects me from stuff that's not really that great. It w- it had said something about a dancing pimp and hoe show. Wow. Yeah, and I was like, wow. That's crazy. I know. <laughs> that's harsh. <laughs> I know. And wow. it was, I believe, it was an Ottawa show. But this isn't a magazine, right? That you're seeing. It was a newspaper. A newspaper. Mm-hmm. Think about now. Huh. This Instagram and shit like that, right? Mm-hmm. Between back in the days, like reviews and stuff like that, because you mentioned like your manager kept some of the stuff away from you, right? Mm-hmm. But like the stuff that you did see to like compare to now, what's the craziest thing that you might have, you feel that you might have seen like as a comment against you? And then another one like as a, yo, like Melanie Durant, I listened to her music and it changed my life. So give me two, a bad one. And a really good one. Why you put me on the spot for, man? <laughs> you gonna prepare me for this? We look. We okay, love good. You on the spot. A good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, you know what? I'm gonna go to. I believe it was the UMAC Awards, mm-hmm. and uh, Hayden, the Jack Soul. Uh, that's the first time I ever met him. He came out of the dressing room, and I was walking down the hall because I was supposed to be on stage for something. Mm-hmm. And he came out of the dressing room and his face lit up and he said, you're actually really good. <laughs> this is a super backhanded compliment. Yeah, right? <laughs> oh. But the way his face, because I wasn't sure how to take it, but the way his face was lit up, he clearly meant it as a compliment, mm. you know, and I didn't take it as an insult. Yeah, 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 yeah. And then, Okay, we'll we'll leave the we'll leave the shitty one. We'll leave the shitty one alone. Okay. <laughs> Tell us about rent. Oh wow. Rent was so much fun. It taught me a lot. Actually, right after doing rent, I had started to build the show to do with my mom. Mm-hmm. Because doing rent taught me blocking and, and all the inside stuff on how to do a professional show yeah, yeah, and yeah. the ins and out of what to take care of. And so I started incorporating that into what we do now. Nice. Yeah. So it was a lot of fun, and uh, it was really interesting. I knew that show upside down, backwards and forwards. I was mm. a swing, and a swing is an understudy that covers many different roles. Okay. So I knew the whole show top to bottom, but you only say the lines of the character you are. And sometimes I had to check my costume to see who I was that day. I was like, mm. oh my goodness. <laughs> so you played multiple roles? Yes. Wow. That's crazy, and that's what, that's probably and- gave you mad discipline. I think it did. I really think it did. Well, think about it. She's playing multiple characters in a show. Yeah. It's like she's an understudy. So if anyone goes down, uh, can you fill in, please? Yep. And, uh, okay. That's that takes talent. That's a little scary too. It is. Like, like what? If, why? I didn't even do my hair today. Right. You don't know who you're playing, what role you got to get into for that. It, that's that's impressive. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, like, now with social media and stuff like that, right? Mm -hmm. How do you navigate, like, through pushing the Melanie Durant brand now in comparison to, like, back in the days when it wasn't all that bullshit around? Well, I think that now people more so know who I am instead of me trying to introduce to myself as, you know, a brand new artist. Mm -hmm. So that's great. And obviously to have Instagram and social media stuff, like they know where to come and find me. And I mean, those of the, those people who are already familiar with my music and our fans, they come look for me. Yeah. So I love that because then it gives me a chance to be one-on-one -on -one with my fans mm -hmm. and friends and family. Yeah, that's nice. <laughs> there was a thing that we were watching or I was watching. I don't know if you ever, if you caught this news also. It was about T-Pain. Okay, and he was saying about how he went through like a four year depression after he met um, Usher in an airplane, right? And Usher was like, dude, auto -tunes. you ruined the music industry with this auto tune. Oh shit. my God. Right? Yeah. So, as a singer, right? As a pure singer, mm -hmm. how do you feel about like the, the way the RB changed? And like, are you pro or are anti auto tune when it comes to RB? Well, I don't want it on my voice. Mm. You know, I take pride in doing things that only doing things that I can actually do without losing, without using tricks and stuff. Because mm -hmm. I'm a live singer. It's like if I cannot create that myself, mm. I do not want it. Because say the power goes out or something, and it's just me singing. It's got to be exact, right. right. Got to be on point. Yeah, I appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. I I realized that right off the jump, and I had said from my first album, it's like if I can't make that sound, I don't want it on my voice. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. a, that's a actually a really interesting way to deal with it. Yeah. Do you still fuck with um some of the singers like some of the like the newer R and B singers that use different techniques on their voice and stuff? Well, I don't. I don't have a problem with them, and I, I'm not even sure who's doing it. Mm. But like I said, I've been heavily in my own music. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. I, it's terrible. Actually, my manager always tells me, "It's like you need to know what's going on, and you need to listen to what's happening now." And it's like, okay, that's you're right. You know, it's good to know stuff, but it's also important to know yourself. Because mm. I mean, knowing yourself is so so important because. I mean, you ask a lot of questions and whatnot because that's your thing. But it's yeah. like, if I don't know myself, how am I going to answer that? No, this is true. This is true. <laughs> no, and, and this is something that we run into sometimes with some of our, of our interviewies. They're like, fucking, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So One, one word answers and oh, for sure. big, big answers. Oh, I've been told uh, back in the day that I'm difficult to interview. Why do they say that? I don't know. I never got... I never got the information from the person who said it. I never even told the person who mm. said it that I was aware of it. But I just thought that's pretty shit to say. Listen, I'm having a great conversation. Yeah, right? I'm, no? finding, I'm finding it very fine. Um, Thank you. Listen, yeah, I've seen you very forthcoming. Yeah. Except for one question. <laughs> you know, that's, neither my, that's not my business and I know better not to ask. Yeah, yeah. So, so what can we look forward to on, on the new album coming up? Um, a great body of work that you can listen to from top to bottom. There was two songs on it that uh, they're good, but they weren't like this rest of the album. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, I'm so proud of it. I think it's my best work yet. And uh, yeah, I'm just proud of it. And I, I'm listening to it over and over and I'm not tired of it. Nice. So <laughs> hopefully, you know, everybody else who takes it in will feel the same way. Dope, 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 dope. Melanie Durant in the motherfucking building. 